And what did the women find when they came to the tomb? Nothing! <laughs> if you were here last week, you know it was nothing. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Today we come to the light at that end of the tunnel of Holy Week, that miracle to which the passion was leading all along. It's a miracle because nothing in our known world can explain it, yet we know the resurrection to be true down to our bones. We have a welcome book at the end of each pew this morning. If you uh, want to let us know that you are here with us, you can always leave a note or a prayer request. Um, if you'd uh, like to be in touch, you can leave some contact information. Um, if you're watching online, hi cameras, happy Easter, everyone online. Um, I don't know if there's a comment feature on the YouTube, but you can always drop us a line on Facebook. It is so good and right that we be together, together in every single way to worship in awe and in wonder this cornerstone of our faith. Let's worship. Please rise in body or spirit and join me in the responsive call to worship as it is printed in your bulletin. The veil of darkness has been lifted to shine the brightest light. The most vicious end has become the most beautiful beginning. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The curse of sin and death have been defeated by eternal life. Therefore, all who are in Christ are now a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, he is making all things new. Please join us in singing our opening hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns, from the Celebration Hymnal, number 45.
join me in a prayer of thanksgiving. Victorious God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to abide with us and be with us. Life can feel lonely, but the fact is we are never alone. Thank you for the season of Lent, for your steadfast love and ridiculous grace. Thank you for making us new. Amen. You may be seated. If anyone who is little, or Kennedy, because she's taller than me, anybody who is in my pre-K, K through four, five, six, seven, up to 99, come on up. had a really good week? Yeah. yeah. Do you have anything special going on because it was Easter? Three Easter egg hunts in one day. Three Easter egg hunts in one day. Friend, I don't have the energy for that. Um, we went to both of my grandparents' houses. Oh, grandparents and family. That is a good way to spend holy days. I love that. Well, we have something a little bit special going on today, too. It, it's Easter. This is kind of the Easter part. I know the Easter egg hunts are fun, but this is actually the whole idea of Easter. I know, I hate to break it to you guys. Very disappointing. So one of the things that we are going to hear today, we're going to read a story about the ladies coming to the tomb, right? And there's Tamsin, what's in the tomb? Nothing. Nothing. Got it. So. There's an angel there, and he says to the women, well, Jesus has gone ahead of you. Y'all had an appointment, remember? Y'all were going to meet in Galilee? Well, he already went. He didn't wait around for you. He just went on ahead. And that got me thinking, if Jesus goes ahead of us, is there anywhere we'll ever be that Jesus hasn't already been? Right? No. When you guys have walked through the snow, have you ever tried to put your feet in the footprints of the person who came first? And why do you do that? To not get snow on yourself? Not get snow in your shoes? To not get snow in your shoes? It like kind of be like following in the footsteps of Jesus. She made the point for me. I don't even need to be here. Thank you. I like to walk in the footsteps ahead of me in the snow because sometimes I trip. My feet get kind of slippery, and then I get snow in my shoes or I fall on my tush. I get snow on my buns. That's no fun, right? So something about that path being laid for me makes it a little safer for me. And that way I don't fall so bad, right? Does that be fair, you think? So what I want you to think about in everything that you do is that Jesus goes ahead of you. So let's say you have something you're really worried about. Do you, you are so, you're too young for worries. Is there anything you ever think about like that, like a school thing or a family thing? I mean, yeah. But anything that you've dealt with, if you go to Jesus in prayer, he's been there too. I mean, Jesus has been through a lot. Right? I mean, what did we learn with our Holy Week timeline? Jesus been through a lot, right? I mean, he had, it's kind of a rough week, you could say. And so anytime we're having a rough week, we can go to Jesus in prayer, and we can know he gets it. He gets it. He understands because he's been there too. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So I've got a couple of things to tell you. First is... We've got a little station in the back to make Easter baskets if you need something to keep your hands occupied. We don't have Sunday school today, so don't go running off. That door is closed. You'll right into the door. Don't do that. They look a little like this. So there's some ribbon cut for you, 
and you can weave it in and out, and you can tie a little bow, and then you can give it a little pipe cleaner handle, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is I have extra Easter eggs. So at the end of the service, I am going to stand in the back with a basket of Easter eggs. Take seven. All of you take eight, okay? Because they have candy in them. They got to go. Um, candy's going to be gross next week. So come and take some Easter eggs, and you can put them in your basket. You don't even have to have a basket to take eggs. That's okay. Now the last thing, I am giving you something to put in your basket or again just to take home with you, and these are a prayer card, okay? So I'm going to hand these out quick. <coughs> Have one? Yes. yes? All right, this is a prayer that we're all going to say together, all right? So I'll start, and you guys can repeat after me. I know some of you are really good readers, so I know you can read along. So we'll do this together. This will be our closing prayer before we go back to see our folks, okay? God made you, and God made me. He made the world for us to see. God loves you in long ago. He sent his son to tell us so. Jesus showed us many things to love and share and dance and sing. To learn and pray to help and care, help and care. He, promised he promised he'd always be there. He died, but then came back to life. Died, back to life. Let's celebrate, for he's alive. Let's celebrate for he's alive. Amen. Thank you for joining me, everyone. You can go right on back to whoever brought you. <laughs> That's a good big brother. Good big brother right there. I do have extra prayer cards if anybody wants to take one of those home. I thought they were very, very sweet. You know, we face little tests of faith every single day as part of the church. Believing in things unseen and having trust that everything's going to work out, even when we can't see the solution, that's all part of confessing Christ crucified. Something that strengthens that faith is the abundant generosity of our congregation and our community. You all step up when someone is in need, in the church or out. You truly extend the love of Christ in all that you do. At this time, we will be passing an offering plate. Any contribution to the church will ensure that this mission and ministry stay alive. Let your heart guide your giving.
before today's offering, let us pray. God, we have been made in your image. So in your generosity, make us generous. In your faithfulness, make us faithful. So that whatever gift we bring to you might be an offer of worship before you. Let us rise in body or spirit to sing our praise. Today is from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as I told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Thank you. 
Mysteries, yes, a poem by Mary Oliver. Truly we live with mysteries too marvelous to be understood. How grass can be nourishing to the mouths of the lambs. How rivers and stones are forever in allegiance with gravity while we ourselves dream of rising. How two hands touch and the bonds will never be broken. How people come from delight or the scars of damage to the comfort of a poem. Let me keep my distance always from those who think they have the answers. Let me keep company always with those who say, look, and laugh in astonishment and bow their heads. There's no intimate heart to heart with Mary and the gardener. There's no convenient stranger wandering along the road. There's no great promise. I am with you always to the end of the age. There's an unknown young man robed in white who says, look, go, tell. Mark chapter 16 is the ultimate cliffhanger of the Bible, with Mary and Mary and Salome feeling the tomb, leaving, running, silenced by terror and amazement. Don't miss the irony here, right? For months, maybe years, Jesus has been urging followers, don't tell anyone, don't don't say it was me. Don't tell anyone who I am or what I'm doing in the world. But a secret's really hard to keep. But now, now when the women have been instructed, look, go, tell, they're too afraid to say a word. A lot can change in three days. When it comes to the Easter story, Mark stands alone. Mark's Easter is a mystery. It shows that the power of the good news can come just as much from what's not said as from what is said. Mark doesn't spend any time on a beautiful Christmas. To Mark, it is enough for Jesus just to be at the Jordan. It is enough for Jesus just to be. Mark doesn't elaborate much on Jesus' teachings or lessons. Uh, this Jesus doesn't give soliloquies and farewell addresses. It is enough for Jesus to teach, heal, and preach. It is enough for Jesus just to be. And for Mark, Jesus doesn't need to make some post-Easter appearance. Mark doesn't need a laser light show or a fish fry on the beach. The tomb is empty, and that is enough. There is something beautiful about the simplicity of the Gospel of Mark. The good news of Jesus Christ speaks for itself, even when it's not speaking at all. So what we have here is the ending to a gospel that's just as abrupt as the beginning of the gospel. The women are coming to the tomb to do as they would for anyone that they loved. Scholar Ira Driggers, he puts it really well. He says they've come to close the curtain on what was once a promising story, but has now become tragic. But the curtain won't close. They see a Nianiskos. Nianiskos is the Greek there for a young man dressed in white. Now, unlike the other accounts, Mark does not call him an angelos, an angel. He leaves it up to you to decide. It's another thing left unsaid. And the angel at the tomb, he repeats this promise that Jesus had already made. You can see chapter 14, 28. After I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. The young man's like an administrative assistant. Oh, you came to see the boss? You just missed him. Just missed him. 
Jesus and his disciples already had an appointment. There was no need for Jesus to wait around at the tomb. And so the story ends with Jesus not making his cameo. Who ends a story like that? Mark, Mark apparently ends a story like that. No, I think that's probably at least one of the motivations for the writing of the future gospels. Here's Matthew going, but you left so much out. What about this? Luke going, what about that? And it's no wonder that ancient scribes, more than 100 years later, added verses 9 through 19. Those aren't original to the gospel. Oh, but now it fits better. Now it tells the same story. But what if it wasn't supposed to? Now, written not even 40 years after Jesus' death and resurrection, maybe the details felt unnecessary. At that point in time, Easter was the ultimate if you know, you know situation. If you know, you know. Mark's gospel wasn't written to convince or convert. It was written to strengthen a community of people who already believed. For that community, Mark's gospel would be enough. If we find this story incomplete, it's only because we are comparing it to the others. Mark's explanation of Easter is no explanation at all. It offers the promise, but not the man. Mark denies us this possession of Jesus because if we own him, it's not really a mystery anymore, is it? Now remember Mary Oliver says, let me keep my distance always from those who think they have the answers. If we believe, as the book of Hebrews tells us, that faith is assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, we don't need Jesus to show up at the tomb. We don't need to know exactly how the women got over that fright and eventually became the first preachers of the resurrection. We don't need the minutes from the meeting in Galilee. That we are a family of faith, worshiping in a Christian church 2,000 years later, shows us the gospel lives. Shows us the resurrected Christ lives. What we see was made from things not visible. When we stop trying to understand the marvelous, when we lean into the mystery that is our faith in Christ, answers seem less important. Tidying up the resurrection story with a little neat sheet of instructions, it no longer feels necessary or even appropriate. The ancient Greek language has tenses that the English language doesn't have, and one of these is the historic present. It's a way of describing some event that is past in a way that makes it still alive and still happening. This is how the resurrection exists in the authentic ending of Mark. The open-ended resurrection gives each Christian today that opportunity to become a character in the never-ending memoir of God's love for us. Mark gives us the promise, but not the fulfillment. That's life, right? That uncomfortable waiting between the promise and the fulfillment. Now maybe, rather than seeking resolution, we should gather in our own little Galilee, that corner of the world where we can make a difference, and Jesus will meet us there. A place where we can do the life-giving work of healing relationships and loving our neighbor. We don't have to understand Easter to be a resurrection people. We may look, go, and tell, laughing in astonishment and bowing our heads in humility and gratitude. The tomb is empty, 
and that's enough. Amen. As we have each Sunday in Lent, we will now make space for silence. The empty tomb, for all its emptiness, is a lot to take in. And being on this side of Easter, it can be hard for us to really think about that fear and awe the women must have felt that dawn. In the silence, tell God the petitions on your heart, or simply take a moment to feel yourself breathe. I will share a short prayer for the world around us, and I will invite you to join your voices with mine in praying the Lord's Prayer. Let silence find us. <clears throat> O oh God of new life, we come bringing thanks and praise for the promise you make us in the miracle of Easter. We are grateful to be resurrection people. We are thankful to know that because of Jesus' great sacrifice, death has forever lost its sting. We are gathered as a people who believe this truth in our very souls. This shared faith makes us family, and for our family, we pray. For the people in our lives navigating grief during what should be a joyful season, hear our prayer. For anyone whose mental or physical health is hurting or on the mend, hear our prayer. For caregivers, medical professionals, teachers, parents, for all the people whose lives are others-centered from day until night, hear our prayer. For each person in the church who has volunteered time, energy, support, and care to create a meaningful Lenten season and Easter morning, hear our prayer. For our youth, that the promise of Easter lives in them today and every day, that their time in church is the beginning of a beautiful life of faith. Hear our prayer. For any person or hardship that we hold silently in our hearts, hear our prayer. Lord, we have seen so much hurt recently, far and wide. Hear our prayers for the broader world. For the victims in Baltimore and all those who love them, hear our prayer. For everyone living in the midst of violence, especially innocent bystanders, families, and children, hear our prayer. God, hear a prayer for the sanctity of our faith. We pray that Christians hold fast to what is good and not be tempted by idolatry, by blasphemy, by taking your name in vain, or by thinking you love any one people more than another. Lord, we know the gift of your son Jesus and his ultimate sacrifice was for all people. His lessons, healings, feedings, and miracles were for all people. The life Jesus lived in ultimate love of you and neighbor was modeled for all people. Hear us as we use his words to offer you this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise as you are able and join in our closing hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, found in the celebration hymnal number 367. <laughs>
cry at the end of the hymn, that's not nice. It's not nice. So I give thanks deep for each of you, of all the places you could have been this morning, that you chose to be here with your church family. Um, a reminder, if you have purchased a lily to honor someone, take it. Take it with you. Um, I do have some boxes over on the side if you need a box to take yours home. Um, and though Easter Sunday is this beautiful climax to our church year, we'll be here next Sunday too. <laughs> and every Sunday after that. Just saying. Um, we can save you a seat. We do have a newsletter coming out this coming week. If you'd like to be on that mailing list, please do let us know. It's a great way to just keep in touch with events and activities that we have going on. Things such as the grocery distribution next week, which means unboxing and packing and all that fun stuff. But before we get back to business as usual, let us rejoice in today. Christ the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen.